The whites live paycheck to paycheck. Research shows more than half of the U.S. are in the same boat. Rebecca works for the state, but William was laid off in October. They're also raising a daughter. In 2022, the couple decided to start their own small business, White House Painters, a lifelong dream for William. I've always wanted my own business, always. And I love painting. It's something I've done for 20 years. The Whites say in the past they had gotten painting jobs here and there, but weren't able to put any money away. When I'm not making that much working for the state and he, we needed to spend that money on bills and to, to help provide, you know, our truck payment is $425 a month for the truck. We haven't really had any money to save. Right. So that's why we were financially in distress. White House Painters is listed on Yelp. So William was thrilled when he got a message from a potential customer. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. I got a message from him and he asked me if I could paint a house for him because him and his wife is moving here from Connecticut. I said, how do you feel about this? And he goes, I feel good. You know, our family really needs this money. The house the customer told the whites he bought was on Myrtle Avenue in Albany. I didn't have really any suspicion at that point because I looked it up and it said the house had closed January 5th. So I was assuming, okay, this is a legit job. And everything sounded legit. Everything really did. Trying to take every precaution, William did text back saying, I hope this wasn't a scam, but the customer never responded. He started going on about the house and what needed to be done and how many bedrooms. And so I gave him a little estimate and he sent a check that was over the estimate. So right then and there, I got a little confused. The customer wrote the check for $4,150, $1,000 more than what the Whites asked for. He also gave the Whites specific instructions. Did he tell you why he gave you extra money? You are to keep 50% of the check, and then the other 50%, I will give you further instruction on who you need to pay for the paint supplier and also a furniture supplier is gonna be delivering furniture because my wife doesn't like our furniture. It all seemed a little odd. So William and Rebecca decided to go to their bank, Broadview, to make sure the check was legitimate. They say a teller gave the check the all clear, so the whites made the deposit. As instructed by the customer, William says he sent $1,000. William says he was also told to send another $1,000 on Venmo for furniture delivery. So why go through with it if you both had just this gut feeling that something might be off? Because he kept calling and telling me that it needs to be done by this time. And, you know, when you're done with the job, I'll have more work for you because I'm in with vendors and I'm in with these guys. And, you know, I have contacts with other business people. And when I move to Albany, if I like your work, I'll have more work for you. You saw an opportunity. Yeah. A few days later, William says he noticed something alarming in his Broadview bank account. I go to check my account and it said cash back $4,150. So I called the bank and the bank said, yes, this check that was cashed was a fraudulent check. Now, William is starting to see the writing on the wall. He had not only sent half the money to vendors as instructed, his 50% had already been used to pay bills. As soon as the money hit, I'm like, okay, we're behind. This needs to get paid, this needs to get paid. And now that I'm negative, I, I don't know how we're gonna pay our bills or anything. And you guys have a kid. Yeah, we have a two-year-old baby girl. And it's hard too, because you're just trying to provide for your family. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't slept in three days. I haven't. I'm working my boat off to take care of her. We're not sleeping. We're stressed out. We my my checks cover the rent and you know my car insurance, but I, I don't even know where to go from here. I really don't. The couple did file a police report with Colony Police. In a statement, the deputy chief said in part, quote, we did meet with the White family and are investigating their report. Unfortunately, scams like this happen more often than you would think. The fact pattern in their scam was one that we have not seen before, and it seems that scammers are getting more and more creative in their methods." End quote.
Rebecca decided to do some of her own investigating. She started with the FedEx envelope. I called the phone number that was on the FedEx envelope, and it was a 75-year-old man from Georgia. And he had said to me, let me guess, you got a package with my phone number on it. And I said, yes, I did. And he goes, so did you and everybody else in the United States. The whites are victims and the whites aren't alone. Brian Jacob, a supervisory special agent for the FBI, says scammers do an extensive amount of legwork to pull off their scam. That includes using personal information from random people. In this scam, Rebecca White says she called the number on the FedEx envelope the fraudulent check came in. He had said to me, let me guess, you got a package with my phone number on it. And I said, yes, I did. And he goes, so did you and everybody else in the United States. The man on the other end of the line is 75 years old and from Georgia. I decided to call him myself. Hi there, my name is Tessa. I work with News Channel 13 in Albany, New York. I'm sorry to bother you. Is it okay if we can just talk for a couple of minutes? The 75-year-old man wants to remain anonymous because he says he is scared the scammer will find him. Although he's not a part of the scam, he did tell me in the last three to four months, he's received at least 50 to 75 calls from people wondering if he sent them a check. He says he tells each person he doesn't really know what's going on other than they're being scammed. Those calls come anywhere from California to Massachusetts, and Rebecca White was one of those callers. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm 75, I live off of Social Security, and I am about to change my phone number because I'm getting multiple calls from different people all over the United States that are getting my phone number. And the Georgia man is not alone. Frost Bank and St. James the Apostle Catholic School, both in Texas, Cato Engineering in Minnesota, and FedEx. These are some businesses that are unwittingly a part of this scam. Scammers really try to build trust. They do. How can they do that? They utilize a combination of factors. So they're trying to identify what makes you a better victim, what makes you vulnerable to them. So they're going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to social engineer you. They're going to try to find out about um, what you do as for work, um, what your hobbies are, whether that's through social media, whether that's through a conversation, um, whatever the venue is, they are trying to build your trust and confidence so that you will more willingly give up your money. This is when the red flags hit for the White family of Water Valite. There was a lot of questions that 13 Investigates worked to answer. First, I looked at the return address on the FedEx envelope. It said Cato Engineering in Minnesota. The company name and the address matched up. And when I called, a person on the line told me they've received several calls about checks they supposedly mailed, but have no recollection of doing so. On the check itself, this school was listed. I called the Diocese of San Antonio, who told me they have no official comment other than to say they are no way involved with this scam or the scammer. Frost Bank says they have no comment as well and will not confirm or deny if they're investigating. I even emailed FedEx to see if they could help me track down where the package came from. FedEx told me they, quote, cannot share any customer information. Any further questions should be directed to law enforcement. How are they able to do all of this legwork to make it look like a legitimate thing? So these scammers are typically part of larger organizations. This isn't just one person sitting at their kitchen table establishing this backstopping. Um, these scammers are part of a group and the group can create these personas um, and they can create this backstopping um, to make this scam appear legitimate. Rebecca and William White are victims of what's commonly known as the overpayment scam. In these types of scams, Jacob says someone will overpay you for the service or merchandise, then ask for some of the money back, requesting you send the money through a mobile payment app like Venmo or PayPal. In this case, the Whites got a message from a potential customer saying he'll pay them to paint his new home in Albany. He sent the Whites a check for $4,150 and requested 2,000 of it be sent through Venmo. 
Even though the check was counterfeit, it got past a bank teller. In the meantime, the scammer sent the Whites another check, this time for $4,300. The Whites say they will not cash that check. I showed that check to Broadview's fraud team and a nationally known check fraud expert. This is a very good item. It looked legitimate. It looked legitimate. It, it looked very legitimate. But if you look closely, the return address was San Antonio, Texas. I mean, the, the, the address in the top left corner, company name was San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio was misspelled. Well, check printers are not going to do that. It was misspelled. It had an extra letter in it. Greg Litster is a career banker and president of Safe Checks, a company made to manufacture high security checks. Litster works alongside Frank Abagnale to design the checks. You may know Abagnale's story from the movie Catch Me If You Can, portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio. Abagnale is one of the most well-known con men in America that now helps the government and businesses against fraud. Litster says nowadays it can be hard to identify real checks from the fake ones. They steal a check out of the mail, they scan that check, they, uh, they just recreate the words on it, keep the signature, retain the signature uh, in, in the digital form, and then print it out on entirely different blank check stock they bought um, online. Even Broadview's vice president of crime says counterfeit checks are extremely common. They've been around for at least 20 years. Most checks that are presented these days uh, that are counterfeit are incredibly good. They're, they're, for lack of a better term, they're pretty perfect. But not always. Shane Shoemaker says he noticed the same mistake on a bogus check Rebecca and William White were given. There's maybe possibly an extra letter on one word. San Antonio? Yeah, but aside from that, this is, this is a very good item. A lot of the security features that you would expect to see in a check are here with the various colored backgrounds, watermarks, microprinting. The Whites own a small painting business and say they lost $4,150 when a supposed customer messaged them to have work done on a new home in Albany. But before the first coat of paint was even rolled on a wall, the Whites realized they'd been duped and given a fake check. However, when Rebecca and William White went to a Broadview teller, they say it went through without being flagged. So how do you deal with a fraudulent check once it's gone through? So I can't speak to obviously any specifics of like this case, but in general, um, you know, when checks are presented to a fin any financial institution, uh, there's no way, unless the check is drawn off of us, that we can just easily find out, you know, whether or not it's a legitimate check. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, how checks are still used regularly. There's a very high volume of checks. So it's, it's not possible for any institution to verify the legitimacy of every check that they process. Since Broadview is the expert, should you always be the ones to be able to catch it on time? So again, a lot of this is all going to depend on the amount of information that we have about the situation. And that's tip number one. So this scam doesn't happen to you. Shoemaker says, tell your bank everything about why you have the check. Tip number two, Litster says, once a check goes through, make sure to wait an additional three business days before spending the money. Just because the money shows up in your account and there's no hold on it, that doesn't mean that the check that you deposit is cleared. Number three, Litster says you can return your check in a certain time frame. And once it hits your account, you must return it by the next business day at midnight, or you cannot return it. So you want to be looking at, at your, uh, your uh, bank statements every day. Number four, don't ever send money to someone you've never met before. And tip number five, anyone that wants to pay you more money than what's agreed is most likely a red flag. As for the Whites, they say they got a call from a higher up at Broadview just days after 13 Investigates started looking into their case. Broadview told them they were going to give them half of the money back.